Greetings, Alpha citizens. This week, new mayor elected, structure finally moves, Radiant flies again, Viad reveals secrets, and more. I'm Craig Allen, and this is Alpha City News. Well, our city has a new mayor. Richard Tricky Dick Noxon was elected over the incumbent by a margin of 53 to 46 percent of the vote. The outgoing mayor appeared with Mayor-elect Noxon this past Tuesday on the steps of City Hall, and both shook hands cordially and echoed each other's sentiments, promising a smooth transition. Mayor-elect Noxon had nothing but praise for his erstwhile opponent, saying that the previous mayor had done much good for the city, which the new mayor hoped to build upon, moving Alpha City ever forward to a bright future. It is inconceivable that Alpha City, a city of heroes and wonders, would not lead our country into this bright new century and this bright new millennium. It is my hope that I will be able to count on my predecessor to help me and the city by still remaining available for consultation during my term in office. I know, without even asking, that I can count on both the average citizen of our fair city and our super-powered citizenry to help Alpha City maintain its place as a paragon amongst the cities of our world. Thank you all. The new mayor does have his work cut out for him, if only in overcoming the understandable reticence of some Alpha citizens to elect a man who was, for a time, a very well-known villain. Many eyes are watching Tricky Dick, waiting, perhaps, for the other shoe to drop. We here at Alpha City News will be among them, as, while Mr. Noxon has talked a great game up to this point, from here on out he'll need to back up his rhetoric with effective action. As always, if there's news, Alpha City News will bring it to you. After almost a week of recovery, Structure the Living Building has finally managed to remove itself from the intersection of Bacon Street and Either Avenue, where it fell following its battle to keep the wrecking crew from destroying the Talbert Building. Traffic had to be routed around the intersection for the entire week, causing havoc in the commutes of many Alpha citizens. Dr. Escalapius, when questioned by intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston, opined that the wrecking crew had somehow managed to damage Structure's central power core, which the doctor said seemed to be infused with some sort of strange radiation, theorized to be the reason for Structure's sentience. Still shaky on its feet, Structure is being helped by Gargantua back to the empty lot it normally occupies, but this is expected to take most of the afternoon, so be on the lookout for closed intersections all along Bacon Street as the day goes on. Alpha citizens were gladdened to see Radiant in the company of the alien hero Jamarganon taking a flight around the city yesterday. Radiant has been under Jamarganon's care for the last few months, recovering from an energy blast which disrupted her powers, while exposing the Gatan shapeshifters who were the vanguard of an invasion of our world. Jamarganon, sent by the Jewel Star League to protect our sector of space, has extensive experience with the black dwarf star energy Radiant was infected with while a captive of the Gatan. Yesterday marked the first time Radiant has been seen over the city since that fateful day, and she seems to be almost back to her normal self. The happiness over her return was tempered by her subsequent announcement that she would be going with Jamarganon on his first tour of our space sector, both to finish healing and to avail herself of his training and the use of her new Black Dwarf Star powers. Jamarganon's tour of the sector is expected to take three to four months, depending on what trouble needs to be taken care of. And while we will miss her, we know that both heroes will make their city proud. Well, we have a new sponsor today, Alpha Citizens, Captain Hoagie. At Captain Hoagie, we start our day thinking about one thing. How many hours it'll be before we can leave this sorry minimum wage hole. 
But while we're forced to be on site, we're ready to make you the best in differently produced fast food in Alpha City. Come in today to try our Captain Hoagie Super Meat Sub with four different kinds of meat that the clueless drone behind the counter is pretty sure haven't been dropped on the floor yet. Captain Hoagie, where we don't really want to make it, you don't really want to eat it, and everybody leaves feeling kind of empty. Captain Hoagie at 10 locations around Alpha City. The continuing story of the Viad creature took a strange turn this past week, just after it vanquished another beast empowered by a glowing stone. Since emerging from the explosion that killed student Jamie Evers, the Viad has fought an octopus creature in Alpha Bay, a horrible combination of rat and cockroach that was menacing workers at Eisner University, and is thought to have been responsible for destroying an apartment in University Square. But this week the Viad faced a much deadlier enemy when the execution of murderer Dennis Wilson went wrong. Wilson, convicted of killing his brother so as to inherit all of his dying father's money, was placed in the electric chair at Maryvale Prison and executed at 12.01 a.m. Thursday morning. Seconds after the fatal shock was delivered, however, Wilson's body was reanimated by a flickering purple energy which destroyed the chair to which Wilson had been bound and which then blew a hole in the wall of the execution chamber. Wilson, or what had been Wilson, proceeded to cut its way through walls and doors of the prison until it reached freedom. As if drawn by bright lights, it began heading towards Alpha City, throwing cars out of its path as it walked down the highway. Wilson's body had covered less than a mile, though, before the Viad appeared in the sky, landing in front of Wilson's body and deflecting a blast of destruction which would have killed the massed police officers and prison guards who were attempting to halt its progress. The battle between the reanimated killer and the Viad moved quickly off the road and into the woods surrounding the interstate, with officers on site reporting blinding flashes of light, the shattering of trees, the incoherent bellows of Wilson being matched by the ground-shaking volume of the Viad using its own name to punctuate the blows it landed on its foe. After ten minutes of combat in the trees, Wilson's form flew out of the underbrush, landing unmoving propped against the hood of a state police vehicle. The Viad then leapt from the darkened forest and, placing one hand around Wilson's neck, proceeded to plunge its other hand into the dead man's chest. Seeming to fight for every inch, Viad slowly pulled a glowing purple stone out of Wilson and, drawing the reanimating energy with it, left Wilson dead once again. Though relieved to have Wilson dealt with at no loss of civilian life, the police present were also aware that the Viad was wanted for questioning, and so calls for it to come peacefully began to come from the masked peace officers. The Viad seeming to ignore those around it, extruded a glowing stone from its own chest, to which it carefully added the stone which had brought Wilson back from the dead. As the placement was finished, a blinding light spread from the Viad, and when police recovered, they found, in place of the creature, the still form of a young woman, later identified as the student killed when Viad first appeared, Jamie Evers. Miss Evers is, at this time, still unconscious, being watched over by the healer and Dr. Escalapius at the Eisner University School of Super Medicine. <laughs> News of a less happy nature comes from the various people watching over Captain Stupendous, Empyrean, Presto the Witch, boy photographer Johnny Munson, and the Neo Deities. Professor Angstrom of Eisner University, the staff of Battle Hill Observatory, and Alpha City News staff psychic Simon Minister all report that our heroes in the far past, the far reaches of space, and the far domains of the human soul seem to have met with disaster, all of which pose a threat to Alpha City. Simon Minister reports that not only has he lost contact with Presto the Witch, fighting for the integrity of the collective human soul, so too have Red Warlock and the Gorilla Shaman, and that a tide of grey rolls in from the edge of our own being, set to smooth out and eradicate the hills and valleys carved by all human experience. 
The Battle Hill Observatory has reported that the hole in space where the twin planets of Amazingville and Despair used to be located and where Johnny Munson and the Neo deities were fighting a terrible battle to stop the reshaping of reality by the Revelation engine seems to be expanding, eating whole galaxies and leaving only darkness behind. Lastly, Professor Angstrom has learned through his chrono calculator that Captain Stupendous and the Imperium, leading a vast army in the past in a battle on old Mars to stop the spread of Rama Ultra's empire through all of time and space, have been defeated by their evil doubles, the Nomark and Son of Set, and have been cast in chains in front of the Tyrant of Time, leaving him free to move forward and take our time for his own. With these heroes lost, captured, or worse, and a cataclysm approaching from all sides, worries begin to mount as to how we will manage to avert and survive these multiple threats. I wish I had better news for you, Alpha City, but rest assured, we're doing all we can to make sure, when the solution is found, that you will know about it. And now, the Super Combat Scorecard. Mr. Skull and the Scarlet Lady danced with the Green Meanie. Dread Menace took on the Mullet and Flock of Seagulls. Grizzly roughed up the Noseless Man. The Symbologist and the Postmodernist fought with words, confusing everyone. Femosaur wreaked havoc until stopped by the Human Comet. Oomph Girl and Sergeant Macaque wrestled with the Iron Pterodactyl. The drunken skeleton tried to hold up a liquor store and was arrested by White Lightning. Two-Gun Mummy shot it out with Sheriff Frankenstein. Big Face took down the shrunken head gang. Dr. Bicuspid was arrested on charges of performing weird dentistry. Brainy Ape powered down the devil's microwave. Rock Hardman, the hero, not the adult film actor, had a proper throwdown with Crankor from Space Lemuria. Johnny the Wonder Something or Other managed to stop Orgo, the thing from somewhere. The Goblin stopped Sam Hain, mostly by reminding him that his name should be pronounced Sawen, causing Sam Hain to pop a blood vessel and pass out. Isis put out a statement that she had nothing to do with those guys in Baghdad, and she wishes they'd stop using her name. This has been Alpha City News with Craig Allen, written and produced by Carter Lee, sound beds provided by Acidus, A-S-I-D-U-S, and you can find him on SoundCloud. If you want to contact us, you can reach us at alphacitynews at gmail.com or at rhymeswithgeek.com. Thanks a lot. (laughs) 